still whinging. Wah, wah, wah. Ah, yes, the Ginger Prince continues to whinge. Do you remember, Harry, before the spider came along? Before he became ensnared by his wife? He didn't do any of this whinging, did he? Sure, he probably did some in private. But we didn't get this public display of poor me, poor me, poor me. That's because nobody encouraged him to do it. That's because he had self-respect back then. He had some self-worth. But then along came the spider, and the spider said, Harry, you need to know your inner self. You need some therapy. You need to tell the world about what you've dealt with. Because, of course... Her narcissism would utilise his vulnerabilities to enable her to control people through him and, of course, to leverage of it with regard to facade management and to try and make money from his misery. Harry's wife doesn't give a rat's ass about what Harry has been through. She believes that she does because her narcissism puts her in that position. But she doesn't actually care. She simply encouraged him to go on and on about it. Many people have difficulties that they deal with. I, for example, was abused as a child. I make mention of it sparingly. Why? Because it's not something I need to talk about. It happened. I dealt with it. Move on. I, of course, mention it in the context of explaining to people why I became what I am. I've also mentioned it so people can understand the nature of the dynamic that I had with members of my family. But I don't go on national television to complain about it. I don't give interviews to newspapers banging on about it. It's tedious to do so, and I'm made of sterner stuff. Harry has been trained to maintain a particular togetherness. He's been taught resilience. He's been taught robustness. It's part of the leadership that comes when you're an officer in the British Army and go through Sandhurst. It's not to turn you into an unfeeling automaton, but to recognise that with leadership comes responsibility, and with that the necessity of the regulation of your emotions, so that you keep them in check, that you don't start unravelling, because you're no good to your men and women when in the heat of combat you start to unravel because all of a sudden it reminds you of the fact that your mum died. Many people in the armed forces have come from unfortunate circumstances. There are many, for example, who grew up in children's homes, and that the military provided them with the first support and direction that they'd ever experienced in their life, a life where they would run away from home regularly, that they would face an unpleasant home environment of beatings, of sexual abuse, early brushes with alcohol and drugs. And thus they came from what would be regarded as a broken background, but they forged very successful careers in the armed forces because it harnessed their inner robustness and resilience. And they don't go walking around complaining about what happened to them. They may tell you about it as a matter of fact, but they don't do it in an attempt to seek pity in the way that Harry does. Harry does because he's been encouraged to do this by his wife. He didn't do it before. This never occurred. But his training at Sandhurst has been unravelled as a consequence of the way that she has gone on when he talks about his own unravelling. As is reported in The Times... Prince Harry Hart of Invictus documentary reveals how he unravelled. The Duke of Sussex has said how returning from his second tour of Afghanistan led to an unravelling, which saw him finally confront the trauma of losing his mother 15 years earlier. In the Heart of Invictus documentary series, released on Netflix on Wednesday, Prince Harry said his biggest struggle was that no one around me could really help. He said, I didn't have that support structure that network or that expert advice 
to identify actually what was going on with me. Unfortunately, like most of us, the first time you really consider therapy is when you're lying on the floor in the fetal position, probably wishing you had dealt with some of this stuff previously. Now, of course, Harry appears to have entered into his own revision of history here, because if I recall correctly, back in 2017, he actually stated that William had urged him to seek help and William had been supportive. That now seems to have been forgotten about in his latest pity play. Now, Harry, of course, is doing this because he wants to try and encourage people to understand what it is that the competitors in Invictus have gone through, that he wants to try and demonstrate a shared experience with them, that these individuals who've suffered illness and injury are now looking to overcome that. And he's clearly trying to demonstrate this is what happened to me also. But he doesn't need to make mention of it. He could just get on with it and recognise what has occurred with the competitors and be supportive. But once again, as a consequence of the way that he has been indoctrinated by his wife, this inner victimhood now manifests and comes out. As I stated, he never engaged in this behaviour until she came along. Now, there were some people who say, well, it's good that he does this. It's good that he talks about it in this way. It's good that he's been encouraged to get it all out there. But actually, most people would disagree. Most people are sick and tired of hearing his whinging. Most people are sick and tired of how he turns it into all about him. Not something he did before. He served before, both in the royal family and the military, got on with it. But all of that has been turned on its head, and we all know why, as a consequence of a particular person's influence. He explained that mental illness was a dirty word when he first joined the military, and he wanted to cure the stigma within society. Look, I can only speak from my personal experience, my tour of Afghanistan in 2012 flying Apaches. Somewhere after that, there was an unravelling and the trigger for me was actually returning from Afghanistan, he said. But the stuff that was coming up was from 1997, from the age of 12, losing my mum at such a young age. The trauma that I had, I was never really aware of it. It was never discussed. I didn't really talk about it. And I suspressed it like most youngsters would have done. But when it all came fizzing out, I was bouncing off the walls. I was like, what is going on here? I'm now feeling everything as opposed to being numb. He's letting it all out and explaining what it is that caused him to explain about all of this. The fact is that once again he's making it about him, encouraged to do so and once again brings up the death of his mother. Most people were sympathetic to him, towards him in relation to that, but they've now become hardly sick of him utilising as an explanation and excuse for so many things. What is interesting, though, is the comparison once again of pre-Harry's wife, Harry, and post-Harry's wife, Harry, and the vast difference of these two men, and the latter cannot be said to be one for the better once again demonstrating the impact that a narcissist has upon somebody. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.